Okay, everybody, I'm going to try to make a real quick video to help the boys out. Um, there was a zone defense on s Sunday. Didn't think we would see a lot of zone. I don't think the coach is playing zone. And the summer league are helping the kids at all. Um, and, um, yeah, we're going to play man as much as we can. Unless we're going to place a weakness where we have foul trouble or something, we are going to play man-to-man -man defense the majority of the time. But we have to have some sort of organization versus the zone. So bear with me. I'm trying to make a video here real quick. Um, so if we're playing a zone, if we're playing against the zone, okay, to keep it simple, we are going to run a 1-3-1 versus a 2-3. We are going to run a 2-3 versus a 1-3-1. So you can see how it's kind of like two formations. 2-3 versus a 1-3-1. One, one. So what that means, you got your hoop here, we got our three-point line, 2-3 zone, they'll look like this. We're going to have our point guard, we're going to have our wing, our other wing, and then we're going to have a guy in the middle. And then we're going to have a guy, what we call running baseline, which I confused some kids when I said, you're my run baseline runner, okay? Um, this guy and this guy work together. Two guys can't guard three guys. So we either pass here, here, or here. The zone shifts. This guy comes across. This guy will be in the corner. If this guy comes out, this guy will be open right here, okay? The key is... And again, we don't have a ton of practice time, so we're running formations against things and just hoping the boys can play and adjust, okay? This guy's gonna be a runner and this guy's gonna be a runner. If the ball goes from here to here, we want this guy to come out and this guy to come in. If it goes to here to here, we want this guy to come out and this guy to come in. And he doesn't have to fill that spot. He can fill anywhere in the lane. So let's get rid of the defense for a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we got a runner here, we got a runner here, we got a wing, we got a wing, we got a point. Okay, point guard can't stay here. He's got to dribble over to make this pass and stay here. Um, Sunday we were getting in trouble with the wing trying to make the pass back to the point guard. He was too far over. Once they picked up, Miles was lefty. He was always going lefty. Drew did a pretty good job early on. Um, but because he's naturally righty, he kind of wanted to go here. They sent this guy over. They kind of sent this guy over. And then they ran this guy here to pick this pass off. We made a nice pass to Ethan to the weak side, and he drove, and that was that worked well. Basically, we want to overload the side. So we, if we have a point guard here, wing here, the runner here, the runner here, we have a diamond, okay? And they'll only have, you know, they'll have their center in there here, so it'll be a four-on-three type situation. Um, we want this guy to make a decision. If he's going to come up, we're getting it to this guy here, and we want him to drive, look to pass to here, okay? But the two runners have to work together. They're a team. So this guy's running baseline. And this guy is running the block if the ball's over here, which means he'll either be here or here, back and forth. Just looking for space. Posting up the man. The reason why we start him off here and our point guard here is if this guy tries to cheat this pass, this pass will be open right away. Eric did have a, we got the ball to Eric, he had a nice 15 footer, it just didn't go in early on. But these guys are teammates in the fact that 
they have to work together and are looking to pass together and dribble penetrate. Um, in, in the game, I was trying to have this guy go back and forth. He was ha covering too much ground and he wasn't getting there fast enough and we were getting in trouble. So it's shorter for this guy to pop out here and for this guy to come across. Looking Again, looking for space. If this guy comes out, this is going to be open. Okay. We're just going to call this 1-3-1, one, one, right? So if they're running a 1-3-1, one, one, or a two, if they're run, excuse me, if they're running a 2-3, we're running a 1-3-1. One, one. And obviously, because of the three-second rule, this guy can't be in the lane. So we put him on our strong side, the ball side, whatever side the ball's on, we want a guy in the corner which would be this guy, which would be the one, one, three, one. And then we want this guy in the middle to make this guy have to try to guard two people. Okay, point guard's gotta come over, fill what they call the slot. And then we got our, we got our diamond or we'll have this triangle, we'll have this triangle. Okay. Um, on zones, we need to Fake a pass to make a pass. We caught, caught trying to throw lollipop passes too high. They got picked off. They dribbled down. So usually this means fake high, pass low. Okay? Fake high, pass low. So, you know, you got your defender. We want to get his hands high. Right, so we bring the ball up, you know, high, bring his hands high, and then pass low. Bounce pass to our man, right? Get this guy's hands up, okay? Dribble penetration, CD did a good job dribble pill penetrating. We move Miles to this side, because he's lefty. Drew did a pretty good job, but then he, gets, he started to get trapped, um, and he couldn't come here because they were cheating this pass. So we put CD at the guard, and we put Miles here, and that seemed to open things up because they were trying to cheat this pass and see he was getting some nice dribble penetration. Um, you want to dribble penetrate gaps in the zone, right? So if there's a guy here and a guy here, and you have the ball here, you want to dribble, try to bring them together, and then make your pass, okay? And then this guy will dribble, and then maybe draw the help, and then there'll be a guy here on the weak side, maybe this wing's diving. Ethan did a good job doing that. Um, but with zones, we want to dribble the gaps. We don't have to push through them. We can dribble in, and when they collapse, we can reverse dribble back out. Okay? They run a 1-3-1. One, one. We tried to run a 1-3-1 one, one out of desperation. It didn't work very well. That's okay. That's okay. We had nothing to lose. Um, but a 1-3-1 one, one is a trapping defense so we're gonna go two three with these guys more in the corners okay they can shoot the three they can dribble penetrate again the idea is fast ball reversals to make this guy run this guy's got to cover all this ground so if we pass the ball back and forth and make him run he's not going to be able to keep up then dribble fake a pass to make a pass here or here okay this guy's this guy's in the middle he's got to move around he's a it's one three one it's two three but it, it's kind of like a diamond two three okay and this guy's allowed to, to roam um, anywhere anywhere block block high post we got um basically they're putting all their pressure on the free throw line and the free throw line extended, right? So if we break it and get the ball here and then already have this guy diving, it's a three on one. So we want, if the ball's here and the dribble set, we want this guy to get here and we want this guy to get here. And then it should be shot fake pass. This guy's got to come all the way down here to try to cover that. So usually fast ball reversals is this guy comes up, fake high, pass low, dribble penetrate, get it to him, 
dribble, cut, cut, and we'll have it. Um, but that is a 2-3 against the 1-3-1. One, one. If it makes helps you, you can think it's a 2-1-2 two, two, if it helps at all. 2-1-2, two, two. okay? And then we got on this side, this guy's got to kind of box this guy. So this side we got, you know, three against one here. If we can get it down here, then we're gonna try. We gotta try to get the ball to the basket, and we're attacking the basket. Once we get to these corners, we're either putting up a shot or we're attacking the basket. Um, they call this corners. They call it two three. It's, it's uh, pretty much a standard formation against the one three one. One three one is designed to get turnovers off of these traps. Okay, if you can get the ball here and then get it to here or turn, drive, this guy's coming in, this guy's coming in, it's a three on one. Basically, you, as soon as you break the high pressure, this is going to fall apart. So, a one, two, two is the same thing. So these are one man front defenses, right? One, two, two. Again... We're putting guys here, here, here. We're making these people go to work. So if this guy comes out, this guy dives to the box. Okay, this guy comes over, this guy comes here. Um, you know, we can maybe dribble penetrate and get it to him, dribble bounce pass in. These guys are just roaming looking for threes. Okay. Um, we ran a version of this on our team. It works very well to force teams to shoot threes. And it, and it, it, it also can like guard against the three if they don't have a big man. And that's what we used it for. So teams would attack it like this. And it was almost like a matchup man to man. Like we would not, these guys would try to switch off and we would just come together and then come back. So passing works. Uh, against the zone, zones are designed to keep the score low. Um, that's why I'm not really happy that I see it in the summer league, but some people are taking this little more, trying to win games instead of develop players, it looks like. So we are going to have, you know, usually this will be Miles because he's lefty, or we'll put Miles here because he's lefty. We might even put Miles on the baseline if as, as a runner. Because he's a good passer. Um, we've had Matthew in here before. Um, we've had Eric in here before. We've had Alex in here before. We've had Alex on this wing. Good shooting, three-point three point shooter. Alex doesn't love to run the baseline. He likes to shoot here. Um, you know, Matthew, Drew, CD. You guys are going to probably be be out here we'll have um you know Aiden Caden Lucas will probably be one of our runners okay so this would be like one three one this would be a one three one you know we're gonna have our guards more in these positions here and then um occasionally we'll stick a guard on the baseline to dribble penetrate to be quick um to keep them on their toes if they if you know if they run this also having a good passer in there like a low passer if they put their big guys in there and have a small guy that's a good passer it gives them headaches they can't get to that that low so they can, they're looking to block a shot but they can't deal with the dribble penetration um one three one um you know this will be mostly our guard, our guard versus a one three one. Excuse me. And then um, Matthew, Alex, some of our better shooting guys, Ethan, um, Lorenzo. You guys will probably be in the corner here. Um, we'll probably put Lucas or Eric, bigger guys, in here. You don't have to post up. You just have to cut and find space. If you can post up, take this guy out. Let this guy dribble and shoot. Great. Um, let's 
look for space. We're just going to run stack. Simple inbound play for when the ball goes out of bounds. First guy goes left, second guy goes right, third guy comes up, second guy releases. Okay, that's stack. So one, two, three, four. So whenever we have an out of bounds play, I yell stack. That's what it is. Line up in four. One, two, three, four. Okay. We put in a four across. This is new to everybody. I didn't run it. I stole it from uh, Brad Stevens. These guys are ones. These guys are twos. If we yell one, um, put it more like here. If we yell one, it means one screens for two. We want one to roll off of the screen and we want to look for the pass to the screener. One to roll off the screen for a three, skip across. So yeah, we're screening for two, that's a decoy. If he's open, give it to him, but we're trying to pass to the screener. This is if they run man. If I call two, two screens for one, two screens for one, same idea, two opens up, we try to get a quick layup here. Two turns around, try to get a three, right? So we're looking for the screener. So one, screens for two on one, two, screens for one on two. And the reason why it's one is one is screening and looking to score, and two, two is screening and looking to score. All right, hopefully that's simple enough. It's a four, it's a, sim it's a four across, basically. It's a four across one, like that. Come around, dive to the block. And if they're open, give it to them. If, but what's gonna happen is they're gonna try to help on the screen and the screener is gonna be open. We're gonna work on that. For the most part, we're gonna do stack. If they press, which, whatever. If they press, they press. Um, we run this screen here. This is called, we'll call the sideline screen here. This guy comes around, goes here. This guy comes back, comes here. This guy dives down, pass to him. He comes around, pass back. We ran this in our playoff game that we lost with Miles taking it in. It worked great. And then tried to run it again and you guys went back to our standard play. Then this guy dri dribble drives. This guy comes across for the outlet if it's open. These guys come running. The guy who hands it off trails. So this guy comes up, passes it to this guy, right? One, two, and then this guy trails behind him. So if he gets stuck here, he can get it to here, and then we can pass to the middle, pass here, ball reversal. That's it, sideline. Sideline press break. We'll put in another press break that throws them off. Um, but that's it. So, I used to do this when the kids were like fourth, fifth grade. I'd be like, if they run a 1 3 1, we run a 2 3. If they run a 2 3, we run a 1 3 1. And they were little kids and it was fun. They'd all run it. And then I'd be like, all right, set up, go. And then they'd have to run to their spots, right? Um, for the most part, it's zone, so passing, cutting, and being patient, faking high, passing low, getting it into the middle. Like we want as many paint touches as possible. Eric was open here a lot um, in the second half on Sunday. He was open right here. But because there was kind of a guy here and here, we weren't making this pass. But a bounce pass here would have worked, and then he would have had a little shot in there. Um, one thing to work on, if there's a defender here, and a defender here, and here, and you have the ball, and you break him away, this is the space for the shot. Too many times we try to dribble into this traffic and we got blocked. We are going to have a height disadvantage this season, okay? You beat this guy, and there's pressure here. You pull up here. This shot's better than this shot when there's two guys on you. An open 15-footer is better than two guys on you for a two-footer, okay? Um, I'd like to see Ethan, Lorenzo, Roy, 
use their strength and speed off of one dribble and get to a spot that's open and pull up and hit this shot. I think you guys had a couple chances to do that. Um, CD2, you had a nice dribble penetration. You got in here and uh, you, actually I think you made a couple. You pulled up, which was nice. Um, so that's one thing. And we can all, everybody on this team can, can uh, work on that. Um, I think that's it. So it's been 20 minutes long, so that should be long enough. Um, real quick, man-to-man -man defense. When we're playing man-to-man, -man, we're forcing sideline, we're forcing baseline. If your man's here, this is, a, everyone knows half court, okay? This is half court. There's another half court. It's called the help line. It divides the court long ways. If your man's weak side, which means the ball is on this side and the ball's not on this side and your man's on this side, you have to be somewhere in this general area to help. Um, there was a guy here. It might've been the other side. He dribbled. Miles was here. This is Miles's help, and he didn't understand what I was saying, which is fine. We want to force baseline. If he gets to the middle, this guy's got to step up and make him pass to this guy. He's got to step up and he's got to recover. Um, our recovery was really, really good. Your recovery should be a run and then chop steps at this guy at the very end. So if he drives your chop steps, your quick feet, well, you can you can recover and get back really fast. Um, we are going to, my one thing I want to get this season is everybody on this team playing man-to-man -man defense. So when you're in high school, and some of you already are, you know this stuff. Force baseline. This guy's here. This guy's here. Like Loyola Porter Moser says, help outside the lane. So, um... We're on defense, we're the X's, so we, we get here. This guy gets here, okay? So he beats you, but we want him to go baseline. Here's our help. This is the trickiest part about man-to-man -man defense, right here. This guard, right here, has to come down and rotate to take away this pass here, this pass here. So while this guy's helping this guy, this guy's helping this guy, help the helper. Okay, we're gonna work on this a lot. We're gonna have some practices next week. Um, it's rotation and then it's it's a scramble to get back. Okay, they were coming up and screening this ball handler. This guy was jumping here and he was what they call rejecting the screen. He was driving here and then this guy was stepping up and helping and then they got three buckets with a little bounce pass here and a layup. So three things are wrong here. Number one, if they're gonna screen to go to the sideline, let them do that. It's harder to score here than it is here. Okay, just go under the screen, stay on his shoulder, force it sideline. This guy, whoever is guarding the screener, you stay here. If he turns the corner, you guys can switch. And then this guy guards the screener, and this guy who's man screen guards him. That's fine. We want to keep them out of the middle. Number two, this man has to stop the ball right here. Has to. He has to make this a pass. Okay? We are guarding the basket. We are guarding the basket. We are guarding the middle. They say it's man to man. It's man to man because you start off man to man, and then everything rotates. But if you're weak side, you are helping ball side defenders. So if the ball's here and we're here and we're forcing him sideline, but for whatever reason he makes a move, he gets you. This guy who's guarding this guy has to step over and stop the ball. Has to. And that was that happened multiple times in the game, and that's one of the reasons why we lost the game. Um, we want to stop the ball here, make him pass, then we recover. This guy recovers, this guy steps back out, let's say, back to where he started, that's fine, because this guy's now the help, okay? There's a thing called the shell drill, we're gonna do it in practice. 
it's basically the ball just getting passed back and forth like in a shell and all it is is learning to rotate back and forth so if the ball's on this side we're here as soon as there's a ball reversal we close out and these guys get to their help the helps the helpline okay okay this guy drives this guy covers a basket this guy's got to get down here this is the key this guard has to get down here why because the guy closest to the basket's more important than this guy. That's why in the NBA you see so many threes hit by like this weak side guard because of the way the rotation is, this guy's going to be open. But that's how you play man to man defense. Okay? That's it. Good luck this weekend. Um we are going to be in Cincinnati. Um Hopefully the weather's nice. And hopefully you guys win. I'm really proud of this team, how they came out. I think they were a little bit down. Um, that We're going to be a little bit smaller. And that's going to be how it goes. But when we have our full team and we have some of our older kids um, out there, we're going to be able to rotate a little bit better. And I'm learning the kids too. I'm learning what they can and can't do. And I, I had put myself in a couple situations where... I didn't have the kids in the best spot for them to uh, to uh, succeed. So I'll, I'm going to do a better job with that as I learn the kids. So, okay. Help the helper. All right. Go Rockers. Rockers was an amateur basketball team in Chicago in the mid-90s. And we're back, baby.